Here's a function that only returns zero for the prime numbers. I have a few others, and in this video I'm going to talk about how I derived them, um, their utility, and a few other things I've found about primes. So a while back I was driving, and I was thinking about a way you could create a function that would test the primality of a number without having to do iterative processing. Um, so as opposed to an algorithm where you check multiple things over and over and over, just one math function. Um, so I was thinking right now, uh, like the most basic way to test the primality of a number is to divide by, you know, every integer less than it and see if there is any integer results and AKA if it's evenly divisible. And if there are, then the number's not prime. Obviously you can speed that up with a lot of different things. Um, but that was just the, the original thought. And with that, I started thinking, what if instead of taking the number and dividing by each number beneath it, instead you divided by the, the product of all the numbers beneath it, because that would just be one function. Obviously, that's not going to tell you if the number is prime or not, but I started toying around with that idea of dividing by the factorial of one less than the number. And I actually did end up coming up with a function that allowed me to test the primality of a number um, using factorial which I denote as gamma function instead. And uh, I didn't have a proof for why it worked at first. I was actually able to create one. Um, but later on, after a lot of research, I found some online proofs um, involving Wilson's theorem for the same principle I was working with. Uh, so the first thing I realized was, OK, so here's a, a basic version of, of the function I wrote. In fact, the function I originally wrote had the factorial in the bottom and, and some other things, but this is the simplified form. Um, so 7 is prime, and the result here is a number and 1 seventh. Um, I'm going to go ahead and swap out x minus 1 factorial with just gamma x. I think it's easier to work with. as opposed to something like 9, which is not prime. You get an integer solution. Um, we can try this with like 13, which is prime. And we should get a solution that's not integer and has a remainder that's something over 13. We'll try it with 15 which is composite, not prime, and we should get an integer, integer solution. So what I found was when you did gamma x over x with a prime number, the result would always be an integer minus 1 over x, um, or plus x minus 1 over x. So what I mean is if we were to use a prime like 7, and then we also, after that, added back 1 over 7, we would get an integer answer, 103. Whereas if we did a non-prime number, like 6, it would already be an integer answer without the, the need to add. So with this knowledge, I was able to create uh, a few cool things. For one, if you take the sine of pi times gamma x over x, you will get 0 for composites. And I'll give you a quick demonstration. We'll use a composite like 9. And the answer is 0. And with primes, you will get uh, something that's not 0. It, you'll actually get the, the sine of pi times 1 seventh, I think. Or, I don't know if that's the exact answer, but it was something like that. And being able to figure out what that value was allowed me to do some interesting things. So I started using the Kronecker delta function, which is a function that returns uh, 0 when you put 0 in, and for everything else it returns 1. 
which is the ceiling of x squared over x squared plus 1. Um, so if I were to take this, this whole function here, and take the ceiling of that squared over that squared plus 1, we would get 0. I'm sorry, we would get 1 on composites because we're putting 0 in, and for everything else we would get 1. The problem is a uh, ceiling function is not a continuous function, so I was able to create a different version um, using some properties of, of my function itself and other things, and I found that the tangent of pi gamma x over x squared over tangent of pi gamma x over x squared plus 1 uh, works for this function, and I can simplify that to sine squared of pi gamma x over x. So with all that in mind, um, there, I'm able to make a function, a continuous function, that returns um, 1 for all primes, 0 for all composites, and, and 2 for 4. Um, the reason it does not work for 4 has to do with a tiny error, or not an error, a sampling size issue in how factorials work. Um, and the prime products of a number. Four is the only case uh, that that will that that will happen for in my function, and uh, I can prove that. In fact, I have proved it uh, somewhere else. But also, you can check with the proof for Wilson's theorem to see that. So I'm not going to cite it here because of that. Uh, but I will show you the function itself just so you can see. And I'll have to. Uh, I have copy paste issues with this, so. <laughs> I'll have to modify it a little, but it's essentially this. It's um, cosecant squared of pi over x times sine squared of pi gamma x over x. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you an example for 7, which is prime. This will return 1. And our answer, uh, Wolfram Alpha I don't think properly computes this, but I will copy paste the solution in, and you'll see it, it, it is 1. There might be a rounding issue. Uh, 0 0.999, but it, it's 1. The reason it doesn't exactly say 1 has to do with some rounding errors in Wolfram Alpha, um, whereas with something like 9, which is not prime, it'll return 0. Um, again, rounding issues here with Wolfram Alpha, uh, but I will compute this out and you'll see that it's 0 0.000 whatever. Uh, so this function does work. Uh, Wolfram Alpha is having some, some issues processing the sine squared and cosecant squared and stuff. I'll show you the function itself. It is continuous, um, if I can map it out. Oh, I guess I can't graph it. Well, it looks crazy. I have graphed it in other places, and it's, it is so, it is continuous, but it's so, you know, so statically all over the place because we're doing four trigonometric nested functions. Uh, you can't really accomplish anything useful with it in terms of like integrals and stuff to try and figure out the number of primes beneath a given x or, or something like that. But anyways, um, I can account for the four error and fix that and everything, and I've, I've done that later on. And uh, using some modulo math and simplifying that as well, I'm able to come up with this final state of a function, uh, sine of pi over 2 times cosecant squared pi over x sine squared pi gamma x uh, this is a function that will return 1 for all primes, 0 for all composites, including 4. And uh, of course, if you just subtract 1 from this function at the very end, we now have a function whose solutions, or when it hits the x-axis, it only hits the x-axis on primes. Um, and it will hit 1. It'll hit y equals 1 on composites. Should be noted, this involves integers. If you use uh, floating values, you'll probably hit it at other places as well. Those numbers aren't prime, obviously, because primes have to be integers by the current definition. Um, using this function, I've been able to simplify it into some other very cool forms. Uh, I have another paper somewhere that goes through the process of how I did that. Um, and using some other details up here, I'm, I'm able to leave out other things. Uh, in any event, I have some cool, some cool functions for uh, primality tests. Some of them return 0 only on primes and then 1 on composites. Most of them return 0 only on primes and then who knows what on composites. It's it's not random numbers, but it's, uh, it's not just like 1 or something. Uh, so I'll give you an example of my favorite one, which is the one I referenced at the start of the video. It's negative 1 to the 4 gamma x plus 4 over x 
minus 1. 7 is prime. We'll plug that in. We should get 1. I'm sorry. We should get 0. And yes, uh, negative 1 to the 4 gamma 7 plus 1 over 7 minus 1 is 0. Uh, a number like 9, which is not prime, should not give us 1. And it does not. It gives us this. Um, bigger numbers, we'll say like 29 is prime. This should return 1 for that as well. Uh, keep in mind, I'm sorry, 0, not 1. Keep in mind, we are dealing with gamma function, which gets very big very fast. So we are going to start suffering from uh, rounding issues down the road, obviously. But let me go ahead and, and test this with a, a cool, a large prime. So I'll just, I'm going to find one real quick. Uh, we'll, we'll say like 3. We got lucky, three, four, five, seven. Cool, three, four, five, seven. And we're probably going to encounter rounding issues. Uh, nope, okay, it was able to process that even. So there you go, zero. Um, um, so this is a function that will return zero for all primes. All the solutions to this function, energy solutions are primes. Um, with these functions, you can do some pretty neat stuff. Uh, so I've created a function here that will, re <laughs> it's, it's more of an algorithm, uh, but this will return the nth prime. So if you were to say p of n, if you were to say 87 for your n value, when you compute this, the answer will be the 87th prime. So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, all the way up to the, the 87th one, that's what you'll get. Um, and this works. And I have computed it on a few numbers just for fun, and it's worked. And it's uh, it's obviously, it, it's not continuous. It involves floor function and ceiling function. And you could get rid of those using some more complex math. Uh, the number of iterations required to, to compute this function is more than just uh, actually testing each number of its prime or not and then counting your way up there. Uh, so this is not by any means a fast method, uh, but it is cool and I'm proud of myself for, for writing it. So this is a function right here that will give you the nth prime. Pretty neat. Uh, another cool thing is prime counting function right here. Um, I guess I have a few of them. Cool. I actually have a few listed. It's been a while since I've looked at this page. These will tell you the number of prime numbers beneath a certain number. I think I like this one the best. Or maybe it was this one, I can't recall. <laughs> and uh, another thing I found, to not today, but this week, is, and I'm still, I'm still toying around with this one, but essentially gamma function isn't that useful for this because it's just as many iterations as dividing. Uh, granted, multiplication is easier for a computer to do than dividing. Um, on the other hand, division can stop the second it hits a decimal place if you're checking primality. So, uh, But anyways, I, I was looking for a way to, to speed this up uh, because I'm a programmer and I these are neat functions, uh, but they only really have value if you can calculate, if you can compute primes faster than you currently can. Um, so something like gamma 8, or, or we'll say, we'll just use factorial, something like 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, uh, factorial of 6, that's, you know, that's 6 um, multiplication problems, and I was thinking, what if instead of doing this, you could get a number uh, raised to the 6th power, 6 on both sides, and those would be equivalent. And obviously there is a number. My question was if you could easily figure out what that constant is. I was not able to easily, easily figure out what that constant is. However, I was able to realize that there is a correlation in modulo properties between the factorial numbers modulo properties and the average of these numbers to the, to the sixth power. Um, they're not equivalent. But the properties, when you look at the modulo for n, uh, some of them have shared and correlated properties. Because of that, I was able to figure out that if you take a number like 7, if we want to check if 7 prime, we'll go 1 less than 7, so 6, 
over 2 to get the average to the 6th power divided by 7, it will be a number plus 1 over 7. In this case, 104 plus 1 over 7 if it's prime. Um, we'll change these to x minus 1 x minus 1, x. So with something like 9, we won't get an integer with 1 over 9 because 9 is not prime. Um, and if you were to calculate this out, you would see that. In fact, I'll show you because I got plenty of time in this video. So you'll see the fractional part of this number is 7 over 9, not 1 over 9, not prime. Cool things you can do with that, obviously, is just take the entire function um, and subtract 1 over x, right, to get an integer, and then multiply by pi, and take the sign. And for this, you will get 0 if it's prime. And of course, 7 is prime. We get 0. Um, this works for x is greater than 2. I found. Um, we'll try 11, which is prime. We'll get 0. And we do something like 15, which is not prime. We'll get something else. Uh, there it is. Now, I found this about a week ago. I started running tests. I built a computer program to calculate out. Um, and I actually did reach a false positive at 431, I think. Or, or maybe it was 341. I think it was 431. So. 341 is not prime. It gave us a false positive. It is the first false positive from from 2 to 350. Uh, so the false positives are very rare, but uh, this is this specific one that I'm talking about, which is faster than gamma function, which is very cool because we're using exponents, and especially with computers, uh, there's some on binary, there's some some nice tricks for exponents. Unfortunately, this one will give you false positives. Um, that doesn't mean it's completely useless. The false positives are very rare, at least early on. Um, one in 350 so far is the, the current track record for that. The false positive, I noted, is a pseudo prime. Uh, the only, it's only divisible by one in itself and then two other primes, which are primes. So it seems that this uh, returns zero for primes and then also for pseudo primes and, and uh, third generation primes and fourth generation and so on. Uh, this can still be used to eliminate composites very well. And then of the numbers that are less, left, you can test their primality. Um, so I don't know that this uh, specific function would be that useful. Um, maybe it would. But I do think it, you can toy with this. And let me just get it out here real quick. Let's, get, uh, let's write it out. I think it's this. Maybe this. It's a pretty cool function. Here it is. And, and you could toy with this, um, I, think, I think, with integrals or with sigma sums and, and Catlin's constant or, or something. Uh, to possibly come up with a much better approximation for the prime number function, p pi of x. Um, the current approximations for those, though they're very close in a ratio test, like 99.998%, I think, if you're looking at the actual numbers, you can be off by 100 primes or 500 primes or something, whereas with this function, you're off by one every 350. I mean, it's going to be like 99.999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999